Welcome back. In the last video, we saw how to deploy a lot of our application to Kubernetes. And we discussed a bit about process models and the many entry points of a lot of our application. And we ended up with a few things that we needed to fix. For instance, one of the things are the configuration. I mentioned that right now we have duplication here. So if you check the web manifest, the scheduler and the worker, they all have the environment variables here duplicated and that's not ideal. So right now we are going to see how we can actually solve this problem. And there are a few ways that we can do that. Many aspects of our application can be configured. Laravel comes with a lot of adapters for things like caching, session, login, all these things, they can be configured via environment variables. And locally we have a .env file, but we don't have that in production. Usually we configure things in the web server or in, in our case, in the container environment variables. One way to solve this problem in Kubernetes is using secrets. So Kubernetes has a dedicated type where we can use to store configurations, which is the config maps and another one for storing secrets. Right now, there is not many differences between config map and secrets apparently, but the idea is that eventually secrets can be rotated and support many different backends. Let's explore what it takes to actually use a secret. We can actually create an object like this. And here in data, in the data attribute of that object, we can specify the many keys of our configuration or our secret. They are very similar in description. The idea is that the values are passed in base64, which is not practical for our case because you know we, we would have to encode all values and all that. But as it turns out, we can actually pass the string data instead of data. And the secret will encode this data into base64 when it creates the secret on Kubernetes. It's important to note that Kubernetes doesn't encrypt anything for us here in the secrets. We are using base64 encoding just as a trick so we could have binary data in our secret as long as we base64 encode it. So let's explore that idea. Let's put the environment variables we have so far in, in a secret object. Let's create here inside the Laravel application, let's create a secret.yaml. And in here, we are going to copy the contents of that secret here, here. And let's name it. So we are going to call it um, Laravel app secret. Instead of data, we are going to use string data just for, you know, for the sake of simplicity. And now we actually are going to copy all these keys and we are going to paste it there. I'm going to change this to the correct format behind the scenes so we don't have to wait. Okay, now that we have it, let's use this. And the way we use this is actually we can point out the secret that we want to use in our deployment or in our pod definition. And we can specify a directory that it can mount. Here's an example. So here we are mounting the volume full under this directory. And we are saying that it's read only. And here we are actually saying that the volume full is actually the secret, but we are not actually interested in mounting the secret as a volume right now. We actually want to use it as environment variables in our pod. And turns out there's a way to do it. We can either specify here each key that we want to mount as an environment variable, or we can specify the secret name and it will mount the entire secret as environment variables in our container. And that's actually what we want. So let's use that. So we are going to copy this part and in our web, we are going to replace this and use that code that we just copied. So the secret name is actually different. So let's copy it and here we can specify that and we can do the same for the other containers as well so let's do that okay and now we can actually specify the secret file here and yeah if everything everything looks good i think so let's just try to create it. So I'm gonna open a terminal here and I'm gonna run kubectl apply and that should create the secret and use the secret in our deployment for the web, for the worker and for the scheduler. So if we go back to the 
yeah to the dashboard we should see the pods we're starting because they are deploying okay and now under secrets yeah we should have a new player there called yeah this one and we can inspect here we can see the, the values and all that if we want to so now if we go to our pods let me scope this to our application and go to pods and now i'm going to this one okay here we can see the environment variables that are being used if you remember from the previous video we actually have a route here that Where is it in the API? Yeah, we have a route here in API name that outputs the value of app name configuration, which if you check here under app, the key name, we read from the environment variable. So if right now we actually do a curl, we will get the configuration from the environment variable. So this means that if we change that, let's do that. Let's change the secret here and let's apply that change to our cluster and see what happens as you might have noticed nothing changed even though our secrets actually changed here our environment variable didn't change and that's because laravel only only reads the environment once when the application is booting and when the secrets change kubernetes actually only changes the values of the environment variables so we can actually see that in action here if we go to the replication controller of a web deployment and we go to one of the pods we can actually see the environment variables here we see that the value is correct but our application is not reflecting that. One way to solve this is we actually have to scale down the entire deployment. So we could scale it down to zero and scale it back to three again later. The reason that works is because the containers are restarted. So Laravel actually boots again and reloads the environment variables. But that's not ideal. Another approach is that we could use immut immutable secrets and create another secret here. And this means that this secret cannot be changed once it's created on Kubernetes. So what we could do is create a new secret and then create a new deployment. And then in our deployment, we change the name of the secret to the new one, which Kubernetes will detect the change in the deployment itself and will roll out a new release. Instead of hot reloading the environment variables, what else can we do? turns out that Customize can also help us there. There are some generators built in in Customize for secrets and config map, and we can actually leverage it. So let's do that. Let's, let's try the Customize way. So we, I'm going to open our customization file, and here under images, I'm going to use secret generator. I'm going to give this a, a name. The name will be Laravel, Laravel app secret. And yeah, I think this is it actually. I'm going to specify a new V file and I actually am going to create it here. So in the root folder, I'm going to create a .env file and I'm going to copy the .env from this secret. I'm going to copy this actually and paste it here and I'm going to replace all the columns with equal signs. So, okay. Now that this is done, I can actually specify that I want the .env file. So the secret generator will actually read this .env file and create the secret for us. We can now get rid of this one. So let's, let's do that. So we are using the same name that we were using there in the secret. And let's see what customize generates for us. So if we use kubectl customize, oh, we're specifying the file still. So we have to remove it. Now let's try again. If we scroll up a bit, we can already see here that in the scheduler, the secret name changed. That's because in, in Customize, we'll generate a new one every time the file contents change, I believe. So yeah, we will get a new hash here every time. So this will actually change our cron job and our deployment. If we check here, the other deployment. Yeah. So this will actually change our deployment manifest every time the secret file changes and that will tell kubernetes to you know rotate all the pods in the deployment every time the secrets changed 
and yeah let's let's try this so let's run kubectl apply so as you can see a new secret was created here and our scheduler was configured so so that means that our configuration changed as well as the web app and the worker deployments so if we go back to the dashboard under overview there is still a deployment going on as you can see here but if we go back to secrets you can see that the, the old secret is still here and the new one is here you can actually inspect it and see that it actually created everything for us so now it seems to be done so let's try to curl it and now we can see that it actually changed let's do the while through trick that we saw in the previous video and keep it running while we actually change the configuration so this time let's change it here and let's apply it again so as you can see the containers rotated and the new configuration was applied so yeah that's how you can actually use secrets to keep your configuration manageable in a central place and also solve the problem of you know, rotating the, the containers when you change the configuration. One drawback of this approach is that your secrets, they are actually never deleted. So every time they change, a new secret is created. And yeah, the old ones, they, they're still around. So you have to manually delete those or clean or, you know, clean those up after the deployment. This is the approach that I like most. And one thing I would suggest well, it's to never store the .env file in your repository. You can actually add a git ignore here and ignore that file. And you can copy it and create a .env.example file. And in there, you make sure that you don't have any, you know, anything that is actually secret like this. So you can replace it with change me just to provide some hints to the person that is actually doing the configuration on what they have to change. And yeah, so you never commit the .env file, you instead create it. You can even store it in a, I don't know, in a password manager and share that vault with your teammates so they can have access to the config file, to the env file, and they can make changes and apply the changes to the cluster. Another approach is actually using encrypted files so there is this package i believe it's from yeah marcel posio yeah the idea is that it, it will encrypt the files and then you can actually commit the files to source control and you could decrypt the file and you could decrypt the file in the entry point so you could specify an entry point here and specify one script file and in that file you could actually do the decryption of the correct file and keep only the master key safe while committing the encrypted credentials file to source control. That's a valid way as well. Another one is actually using Vault. So HashiCorp has this product essentially for managing secrets and you can use that. You can even integrate it with Kubernetes and mount your secret as environment variables or something like, like that with using sidecars. I haven't done it yet because, you know, running Vault doesn't seem that straightforward to me. And yeah, I'm not used to that yet, but it's definitely something that I want to explore a bit more. So yeah, that's it. That's secret management. I'm going to release this file, this repository as well. So you can actually, you know, poke around and see the everything that we have so far. In the next video, we're going to see a way to automate migrations so we can run migrations as part of our deployment strategy instead of manually running it. So yeah, I hope you liked it. Stay tuned.